if I can have anything to do with it, there will be a mercenaries pen and quote. Better get to work pandemic, that's a pretty tall order. Now finally, we're taking a look at what might be the most impressive user-created Little Big Planet level to date. A Japanese gamer who goes by the name RRR30000 has posted a YouTube video showing off a fully playable version of level one from Gradius. This detailed level includes an identical layout, a ship that fires lasers, an erupting volcano, and enemies seemingly ripped right out of the 8-bit era. There's even a boss battle that ends with an explosion followed up by a little fat boy who sticks out his tongue and points his fingers in the air. Well, if you see an amazing Little Big Planet level, send us a tip via our website, which is g4tv.com slash xplay, which is also where you'll find all the latest news. Well, that's it for today's gaming update. Let's go over to Adam, who has been cleared of all charges of collusion with the Chimera. Yeah, I just have two eyes, and they're not yellow. All right, Nathan Hale returns to defend the United States from the Chimera in Resistance 2. This time around, he's been promoted to lieutenant, which is a fitting reward for, I don't know, saving all of England. Find out how he fares in the colonies in this review of what's sure to be one of the biggest PS3 titles of the season. theme of Resistance 2 is bigger and better. Virtually everything has been expanded or upgraded to give you even more of what you loved about the first game. You're still playing as Lieutenant Nathan Hale, who is mysteriously immune to the Chimeran threat. The story picks up directly after the events of the first game as you wander nearby Britain after saving the day. Hell of a way to greet a war hero. After you wake up, it's explained that you'll have to undergo some further testing to determine why you're immune to the scourge. The survivors of Project Abraham undergo mandatory testing before entering the mainland. It's just protocol, Sergeant. Answers will come in due time. But those answers have to wait while your Icelandic military base is attacked by the Chimera. And this conflict gives us the first glimpse at just how epic the battles will be in the rest of the game. How epic? Well, let's just say that later bosses make this enormous monstrosity look like an adorable Welsh corgi. From there, the game's narrative jumps forward two full years, and you're now in San Francisco. Yep, it's up to you to save the city, so that decades in the future, X-Play can tape our host wraps at the Sony Metreon. But seriously, the Chimera are attacking the entirety of America, and it's up to you and your group of Sentinels to take them out. Quite possibly our favorite part of Resistance 2 is that they've made the wise decision to move the action out of gray sky Europe. The change of pace allows for a wider palette of colors and a big improvement on the game's sense of variety. The art directors have crafted astonishingly beautiful landscapes of destruction. This is what Thomas Cole would have painted if he had lived to see a Jerry Bruckheimer movie. The game's pacing is also superb. Once the action kicks in, you truly feel drawn along by the narrative of Resistance 2. Few games really make you feel like you're part of an adventure, and this is one of them. The control system works wonderfully, and players will be happy to know that the weapons have also been improved. Gone are the more esoteric weapons of the first title, and players will be happy to know that the bullseye has been improved significantly. On the multiplayer side, the game features 60-person competitive play. That may sound like a lot, but the developers have wisely crafted skirmish mode, which teams you up into smaller groups with an ever-changing set of goals. The result is competitive multiplayer that's fun and doesn't feel overly frantic. But if you're conflict averse, you can join up with your friends online to play through specially crafted missions situated in settings of both Resistance 1 and 2. You'll play in groups of eight, and you can be a medic, a spec ops guy, or a soldier. We found all three to be well-balanced and had a blast in the time we had with co-op. One of the few negatives to Resistance 2 is that it's sometimes possible to misunderstand certain directives given by your allies. That's because of the loud sound effects and other voice work being thrown around. But obviously, that's not a very major gripe. Good, let's move. This is the rare sequel that probably considers what was good about the first game and manages to make it even better. Resistance 2 is a 5. The operation was a success. Out of 5. 
One of the things we didn't address in the review that we yeah. obviously were talking about in the uh, special was the, the, the scale. There are so many big things in this game. Huge things that you fight, but the thing is, like, we actually didn't really want to show them to you in the yes. review because part of the fun of this game is hearing something coming, not really being able to see it, and then mm -hmm. finally seeing it and then just being floored by it. So showing people with that Yeah, it would take away. There, there really is a moment in the Twin Falls, Idaho section that was one of the scariest things I've experienced in the game. The, the couch I was playing on moved about a good six <laughs> inches, and that's a good barometer about how much I'm enjoying myself. They can also get so many enemies on the screen. It's just, it's very yeah. impressive and terrifying. And, and, and doubly so in the co-op, where they obviously have far more enemies. There is no perceptible drop in the quality of the visuals, nor the frame rate. It's, it's a very impressive tactical feat. It is with eight-player co-op, so many enemies on the screen. It's a lot of fun, you guys. If you have a PS3, you should really, really pick this one up. Yes, and find seven friends. <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> is obviously the crown prince of gaming at the moment, and with the Wii and DS printing money at an alarming rate, it would make sense that their next step would be world domination via some sort of motion control super laser. But according to their game guru, Shigeru Miyamoto, Nintendo has other, less megalomaniacal plans for the future.